I said, Lord, I'll make it clear and available what witches believe in order for people to make up their mind. Amen? Amen. During the time of the vaccination in this pandemic, I didn't tell you if I was vaxxed. I didn't tell you to get vaxxed or not get vaxxed. But I told you, pray about it and ask God what he wants you to do. And I'll pray with you. Because whatever you do not do by faith is sin. Amen? It's your choice, but I can't make you do those things. All I can do is expose you to the truth and allow you to hear what is out there. And I felt that the best way to help you understand this and parents and everything, because I talked to these ex-warlocks, ex-witches, and they even come into congregations. We see a lot of them in the church today. And I talk to them and we have meetings and I talk and ask the questions and everything. And I, you know, what I really feel like doing sometimes is like, wow! But I sit there like, is that right? Hmm. I don't necessarily jump up and down like I feel like doing. Because sometimes I feel like saying, oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, did I say that? Praise God. Oh, this ain't Friday. Praise yeah, God. Friday night <laughs> oh, that's Friday night prayer. One of them slipped out. Praise God. <laughs> come on, somebody say, come back, come back, come back. All right. Praise the Lord. Because when I hear that, that, that they're, they're targeting Christians and leaders, and, and I know that there were a number of them that wrote me when I was on the 700 Club, and they were talking about and maybe to scare me or something like that. Ooh, I'm really scared. <laughs> that was funny, praise God. But, I, I, you know, I, I, I wanted to find out what it was, and, and, and I said, okay, Lord, I get that. I get that. You know, we're living in a complicated world right now. But I believe that the people who are struggling the most right now are believers because they don't know what they believe. And until you know what you believe, you can't necessarily fight against what you don't see. Amen? You, you, gotta, you, you cannot be a spiritual ostrich and be victorious in the kingdom. You, you have to have the mind of Christ. There has to be a, a change that takes place and you, you realize what you're breaking up with in order to understand what you're making up with and what you're coming into. Amen? I want you to see something because I want to take you to the scriptures and uh, it's in the fifth chapter and I want you to look at with me a chain breaker, a history maker that had a good understanding of what he was going through, but in spite of what he was going through, he knew to run to Jesus. In spite of what he was going through, he knew to run to Jesus. Amen, church? You see, this is important because if you don't get this, Mark chapter five, I just wanna read seven verses. And then I'll move along with this. If you don't get this one, then you're not going to realize the purpose and the destiny that you've been called to. You're not going to realize that it's not about merely checking boxes, but it's having a relationship that God is inside of me. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. I've been praying for you before we got here and we prayed on Friday night and the Lord already said, there is a breakthrough in progress. Amen. Come on, somebody say, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. You gotta receive it because I want you to succeed. 
When I first started in ministry, I wanted to see that everyone was saved. And it seems like the, the more mature I get now, I want everybody to be saved, but I want them to be discipled that they know what they believe. I want them to be strong because the people that know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Amen? Amen. I believe the only way that we can carry out great exploits is if we are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. But I believe that because we're strong in the Lord and the power of his might, that this year as we begin to move, you're not going to limp into the new year when it turns 2022. You're going to walk in with your hands up like you just came out of Falls View Cantino because you just hit the jackpot. Not like any of you go and hit the slot machines anyway, praise God. <laughs> Somebody say, come back. come back. Come on, stand with me. It's our tradition. It's our practice. Why? Because we stand for the queen. We stand for the dignitaries. Let's stand for the word. We got the word in our midst. Amen? Amen. Glory. Glory to God. I, Father, let there be an anointing on your word that it would not only be to the hearer, but it would be to the receiver it would be to the speaker, let the blessing of the Lord, Lord, fill the house. Hide me behind the cross. I sit myself down that your spirit would rise up. I ask you, Lord, that you would bless your people. Today, by faith in Jesus' name, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Come on, sit down if you can. You know, when I looked at this, this verse, I, I, I saw something that really kind of puzzled me. Because this man was in the Decapolis, he was in the Gergesenes, he was in the 10 cities on the other side of the Galilee, the Sea of Galilee. Yes. And this particular brother was in a place where it, it doesn't say how or it didn't say why, but he was naked and he had been bound many times. He had chains on him. And it says that immediately when he sees Jesus, he runs to him, and the King James says that he fell down and worshipped him. But the NIV says something different. It said he just fell down. He dropped down to his knees. And I started thinking about that, and I said, man, that, that's, that's interesting how different versions have a different take on that. And I love you to look at different versions so you can hear in different ways what God is saying, so you don't just get caught up in just looking at it once, but you look at it again and look at it again. Because truth has to be seen over and over and over again before you can assimilate it. Somebody say amen. amen. See, this is important because when I started looking at this, I, I, I recognized that the, the writers of the NIV version did not believe that this man being demon-possessed was capable of coming to Jesus because he didn't believe that he was in his right mind. And on the other hand, those in the King James believed that it was only by the grace and the love of Jesus that kept this man alive. So it was definitely possible. It didn't matter if he had a legion of demons in him. No demon can keep anyone back if they are sincerely going to see Jesus. Can I get a good amen? Amen. If you're really in, 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 in love with Jesus and you desire to be with Jesus, I saw something that is so simple that no matter what you've been going through during, during this entire month, it can be broken in one second with authentic worship. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say in Jesus' name. You see, this is important because as I started looking at this, I started understanding that, watch this, and this is Pastor B's version of this, the devil... The devil may paint the darkest, saddest, most perverse and corrupt picture of hopelessness, despair and sin that he has ever painted and God will turn it into a backdrop for the greatest display of his glory that this world has ever seen. No matter how dark the, the devil paints, God makes it into a tapestry for the glory of God. When you trust in him, no opposition that you face can stop you if you truly believe that Jesus is Lord. Uh, I'm going to high five myself on that in the name of Jesus. You see, the big hope application is this. Don't wait until it's too late to make lasting contributions that cause to the cause of Christ and his kingdom. 
I believe this pandemic is perfect. It's a perfect opportunity. It's a perfect climate. It's a perfect environment to see you walk in a place of absolute victory. It might look dark on the outside. It might look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by him. Amen, Amen church. Amen. I believe that we are in a place that God said you're going to walk in the miraculous. Amen. You're going to do the impossible. I know there's only three people that gave me a high five, but I high five myself in the name of Jesus. If Amazon and everybody else is making millions and billions during this time, I believe that God says the most creative instrument on the planet is the church. And the church has the ability to do everything but fail because on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Come on, if you believe it, shout yes. One, two, three. You see, this is important because I got to help you understand when you choose to be a chain breaker and a history maker, like so many before us, in spite of enormous odds, remember, as we'll be remembered as men and women who rose above difficulties. You see, you got to rise above. You know, that's what our ancestors understood. That's what you hear with Maya Angelou and so many. I will rise again. I don't know where that fell, that that thing lost its, its power in its residence, but people don't have that same thing. My grandmama had that. She didn't have a whole lot. She didn't even have a whole lot of education, but she had something inside of her. It was unshakable. And she said, I will rise again. She lost her husband when she was only 30 years old and had nine children. But she said, I will rise again. And I knew from grandmama that there was something inside of her that was so deep that it didn't matter how many times she was hit with the afflictions of life. My grandmama believed that Jesus was able to do everything but fail. Oh, glory to God. I thank God for Alberta. I thank God that she put that deep in my spirit that I will rise. Come on, somebody look at your neighbor and say, you will rise, you will rise. You see, it's important because these people in history, they expected great things from God and attempted great things for God. You got to expect great things from God, but you got to attempt great things for God. You can't wait till everything is comfortable. Right now is the time that you got to say it because when people see it, they're going to believe it. After everything is back to normal, they're going to be looking at you and say, she said it, she said it, she said it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus allowed a little boy with five loaves of bread and two fish to be remembered in history with well, a great miracle to show that little becomes much in it when it is placed in the master's hands. Jesus has not only showed this to a little boy, and I believe he was a fat boy because his mom packed a good lunch for him, but he also allowed Meshach, Shadrach, and a bad Negro to be remembered because of their great faith and obedience in spite of what the king said. They refused to compromise their beliefs. They said, I'm still not bowing down. I hear the music, but like Pauline, I, you, you can fire me. You can do whatever you want. I'll let the union take it up, but I'm still going to stand for my rights. Amen. You got to understand that when he did that, when they did that, Nebuchadnezzar didn't like it. They were speaking to power. I think we don't realize that power is inside of us, and we've got a greater power in us than the power that is over us. Sometimes I think we listen more to the who and then and instead of until instead of listening to the Lord. Amen. Uh, I'm going to get myself in trouble today, but that's all right. You see, God allowed Joshua and Caleb to be remembered in history because they believed him for his promises in spite of overwhelming odds. Who are we against these great giants? But but both of them, they literally said, but Lord. We can do it with you. Amen. Caleb was 85 years old and he says, I'm still as strong as ever. Give me my property that belongs to me. Give me my promise. I dare somebody 75 years or older to say, I want my promise. Amen. You got to understand that this is so important because 
God allowed Esther to be remembered, to be remembered in history because she was willing to sacrifice her life for God's purpose and his people. Therefore, God gave her beauty and beauty. Not only did he give her a nice weave, but he gave her beauty and the glory. Hallelujah. Because she said, if I perish, <laughs> I'll do it with natural hair. Praise God. Somebody said, come back. Praise God. All right. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but you see, the, the thing is, is this. You're not the first that has ever gone through adversity. So, boo, why don't you turn that frown to a smile and start putting your happy back on? Because if you can get sad, you can scratch it and get glad. Glory to God. Yes, you can. Hallelujah. Uh, I may not get no help today, but I'm a, I got my own help. Agnes Borghese. Those in Calcutta called her the saint of the gutters. One said, one day I dreamt that I was at the gates of heaven. And St. Peter said, go back to earth. There are no slums up here. Her name was Mother Teresa. And she would spend the rest of her life taking care of the unlovable and the untouchable. She lived amongst those lepers and those people that had AIDS. And she fed the poor. She took care of the needy. Why? What compelled Mother Teresa? She had been with Jesus. It was a real touch that she had. It was a real relationship she had. It wasn't a fake it till you make it relationship. It was something deep that she believed what the Bible said. This is Reformation Sunday. And I believe that the Lord said that we've got to reform some stuff, church. So to help us reform, I believe we need to look at a man who was in a cemetery and he made that his home. I want to give you some hope to go. And I bless, I pray that this is going to bless you. But if you're going to be a chain breaker and a history maker like this brother, chain breakers and history makers realize their need. You got to realize your need. It says in the New Living Translation of Mark 5, chapter 4, chapter 5, verse 4, it says, Whenever he was put in chains and shackles, as often as he often was, he snapped the chains and subdued. He says he snapped the chains from his wrists and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Now, see, this was interesting because as I started looking at this, this story is full of conundrums because this brother wasn't necessarily harassed as much by the demons as much as he was harassed by the church, by the people around him. Sometimes your enemy is not just the enemy out of me, but it's the enemy behind me and next to me that we have our greatest challenge getting out of the shackles. Oh, don't shut me down when I'm preaching good. Some of y'all are going to go back to them shackles and you're going back home and you, you, you're next to that person. So all you better do is go in the mirror and say, he's right about that. He's right about that. See, this brother was shackled. And they, they tried to, but, but there was not a shackle that was strong enough to keep him shackled. Because I believe if there's, there is a destiny inside of you, God is not going to let anything disrupt what he put inside of you because God put it there your life is not about what people say you are or even what you're going through right now because God has got something that you're going to it's greater than what you're going through so no matter what it feels like right now you can make it through this moment but you got to realize your need you got a lot of people who come to church and I remember listening to these witches and warlocks and they were saying, you know, we worship and we worship more than Christians do because we know that if we don't tithe, Satan is going to put a disease on us and he's going to hurt us. We know that if we don't stay, and he says, we don't go to church for one hour. I were hearing John Ramirez, he says, he said, we usually go for at least seven hours at a time. If you're not done by 20 minutes in your preaching, most Christians have fallen asleep or they're on their way to Swiss Chalet. Oh, I said that, didn't I? Praise God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. 
You see that what he, what he said is that no, we took it serious. And he says, they want to go to church for one hour and we're throwing curses on them after curses and discouragement. Who do you believe was listening to our prayers? And I said, my God. Because he says, I believed he was my father. So I talked to him as my father. Is Jesus your father? Then maybe every now and then, Mike, why don't you give him a call? Jesus. <laughs> I think that came out of Joel. Praise God. You're hearing that. Come on, somebody say, he's in that mood today. Praise God. Oh, yes. It's a reforming mood because I've been watching the church too long. And then the Lord said, remember when you came from. Maybe it's because I went to my 30th anniversary of the Argos and the championship, and they just did a documentary and everything, and I saw myself wilding out, and I said, where did that guy go? Moose sent it to me again, and he said, that's my pastor. That's Bishop B. E. And I said, where did that guy go? That guy didn't even care about what people thought about because he was more concerned about what God wanted him to do. That was the concern. But that's the one that wins championships. That's the one that wins the prize. Not the one that just wants to be everybody's puppet. But who remembers that God called him to be a pastor. Amen. Oh. I got to move on. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time. You got to realize the demon egg believed that he was better off living among the dead than the living. Alone in the dark, by himself, with the dead. You know, and like this unconstrainable, uncontrollable, demon-possessed man, many of us can feel the vacuum and the vortex drawing our hearts into divine destiny. The big hope truth is this, the more danger we are to Satan, the more opposition we'll receive from darkness. The more you are a threat to darkness, the more they are going to see you as a priority target. And if you're not going through mess, it's because maybe you're going in the, in the same direction. You guys have the same plan. You see, I, 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 I got to tell it like it works. On that same note, Satan is not opposing us just because we are, we are in, in, inadequate. Satan is opposing us because there is something in you, a chain breaker, a history maker. You got to realize your need for Jesus. So. Can anybody say, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour. Every hour. Now this part you got to say, Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I believe that's the, that is the, the song of a history maker in a chain breaker. Amen? I need thee. How many of you have been on the job and said, Lord, I need thee? How many of you have been in a situation and said, Lord, I need thee? How many of you have been somewhere in this last week and you said, God, I need thee? You see, you got to keep declaring, I need him, I need him, I need him. Come on, declare it right now. Because he's a need meter. God is more concerned about, about blessing you than being mad at you. But you got to declare, I need him. But number two, chain breakers, history makers recognize their priorities. Look what this says in Mark 5 and 6. Watch what he says, the New King James Version. I don't want the NIV version, but I want the New King James Version. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Did you see that? The Greek word for this worship is proskuneo. In the NIV and also in every other version, it's proskuneo. On the count of three, say proskuneo. One, two, three. Proskuneo. And proskuneo is the same in every version. It literally means that this brother was stretched out. He was stretched out. And I said, is that the key? Is that the key to victory? 
that there were, the Bible says, don't miss this, Brother Kenny, there were a legion of demons inside of him. That was more than 12,000 demons. But this brother was strong enough to literally, when he saw Jesus, Proskuneo, we sit up like it's hide, it's hide, and you wonder why unbelief, disobedience, and everything keeps hitting you. When you wonder why all of these things start shaking your foundation, because you've never found your way to His feet. Because when you've kissed the feet of Jesus, you'll never grovel at the feet of man. This brother literally recognize that I can drag like Samson I can drag 12,000 demons one can cast out a thousand two can cast out 10,000 I believe in a authentic praise you can literally rupture the enemy's army Remember this, his strength is made perfect in weakness. For when I am weak, I am strong. You see, this is important because when I look at this, 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 this brother was existing. He wasn't living. He was existing. He was constantly being reminded of death. Day and night, he wandered among the burial caves. Satan, the father of lies, loves to keep us dwelling on the negative to promote hopelessness and despair so that we can sense nothing but hopelessness. When we examine the condition of this demoniac, the Bible calls him a demoniac. This man was healed. This man was delivered. This man was saved. But the Bible calls him a demoniac because he don't want you to get it twisted. He wants you to understand this brother was in some deep stuff. But God can pull you out. Come on, somebody say, pull me out, Jesus. The big hope truth is the only reason this man was still alive. The only reason you're still alive is God loved him. God loves you. And he was keeping him. Somebody shout, he's keeping me. He's keeping me. And when he's keeping you, no devil can hold you back. When he's keeping you, nothing can hold you down. When he's keeping you, nothing can discourage you. Because God is keeping you. The last thing I want you to get this is he responded. Even in the hospital, they want to find out if you're DOA by putting a mirror in front of you and seeing if there's any life signs because of breath. He responded to the call. Will you respond? That's the question. Because the only way, <laughs> you don't get it. There used to be a song called Breaking Up is Hard to Do. You remember that song? I probably went and dated myself on that one. But breaking up is hard to do. It's hard to break up with some attitudes. It's hard to break up with some perceptions that are not biblical. It's hard to break up with not just what you don't like, but what you do like. <laughs> some of y'all got to break up from some stuff that you like. I'm not asking you to break up with broccoli. I'm not asking you to break up with asparagus. <laughs> I'm asking you to break up with your sin. I'm asking you to break up with some of those nasty ways that only you know, the little bitty secret, the thing that nobody else knows, but when you go back to, the devil knows that you're doing it. Oh yeah, this is church. Tell the truth and shame the devil. I know that you're real because I got three fingers, four fingers pointing back at me. 
because I'm real. I know we got some nasty stuff in here. Come on, somebody say, he preaches like that. Especially when you start hitting that ham and organ like that. Because I can feel my help and I praise, I, I, I praise God all by myself. And I know I got an amen corner, amen? amen? But I'm asking you today to break up not with the stuff that you don't like, but with the stuff that you do like. You see, Almighty God is deeply committed to those that are committed to him. The Bible says in the 14th and the 16th verse, as the worship team gets ready, that the herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country. Because when you really tell folks what you've been delivered from, guaranteed, guaranteed, there's some other folks out there got the same issue that are ready to see the deliverance with the same problem. Once you begin to get into your right mind, you're going to mess up some folks because they ain't going to want to be around you anymore. They only wanted to be around you because of your dysfunction, because it made them feel a whole lot better. So you don't look at them and determine when you're going to get right. You start getting right because the Holy Ghost began to speak to your heart and something on the inside is working on the outside. Praise God. Oh, my God. Yeah. You see, November 1st, they call it the Mirata. And it is the, the, the dawn of the dead. And they celebrate the dead. They believe that during this time is a thin place between the, 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 the afterlife and the present life. You see, you thought it was just Halloween, but they're saying it's Christmas and it's also it's Easter. So what I'm saying is this. This means war. You're a chain breaker. You're a his story maker. You're going to tell his story and you're going to publicize his praise in this season. The moose is going to be on the loose in this season. There's going to be a turnaround in your life. There's going to be a difference in this church. There's going to be a difference in the people of God. We're the head and not the tail. We're the lender and not the borrower. Above and not beneath. We will be victorious. Give me a big amen. You see, the big hope truth is the devil can try to disrupt your prophecy, destiny, purpose, and call, but he can't stop it. Come on, somebody say, can't stop this. Can't stop this. No, you got to do an MC. That's somebody did. Da -na -na -na. Thank you. As soon as you pick up your assignment, the devil assigns you a demon to hinder, harm, trouble, and oppress you. But he cannot steal your salvation or disrupt your prophetic destiny. God has sealed your prophetic destiny. But he's waiting for you to pick it up. Somebody say, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. So this is the big hope in action. Tomorrow when you go to work, this is the goal. God expects that when people talk about your life and your livelihood, that it will bring glory to God. And that is your choice. God expects when people speak of your attitude and your words, that your attitude and your words will bring glory to him. And that is a choice. God expects that when people see how you trust him in the face of whatever circumstances of life may put in your way, that your trust will bring glory to him. And that is your choice. This is the solar, the five solas. One is solar gladia, which means grace alone. Somebody say grace alone. grace alone. It's the grace alone that you've been saved through faith that no one can boast. You've got to realize what you're doing is not because you deserve it. It's because God is gracious and he's given it to you. Somebody say solar gracia. Solar gracia. Grace, alone. grace alone. Solar fide. Faith alone. Faith alone. 
The Christian life is not about us just trying to, to, to imagine and name it and claim it, but it's by faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. You got to believe that God is a rewarder of all of those that come to him. By faith, you can move mountains, but you've got to unleash your faith. Your faith can no longer be in a place of anemic activity. Your faith has to be like the reformers of old, sola fide, by faith alone. Somebody say by faith alone. But number three, sola Christus. Come on, say sola Christus. Sola Christus. And that is by Christ alone. Amen. By grace alone, by faith alone, by Christ alone am I saved. If you don't get to know Jesus right now, no pastor in this natural is going to be able to help you be delivered from that supernatural. It's Christ that delivers you. It's Jesus that we preach. It's the name of Jesus that we come to church for. Amen. Somebody say through Christ alone. And then number four, sola de la gloria. Someone say sola, sola. Deo. Deo, gloria, gloria. to the glory of God alone. The glory of God alone. The glory of God alone. You see, it's the glory of God that you're living for. The reason you were saved is because of the glory of God. You're not here because you can do anything other than give glory to God. Come on, somebody say sola. Sola. Deo. Deo. Gloria. Gloria. I hear 500 years of reformers rising up in this house. I hear 500 years of men and women that have declared my next generation will do greater exploits than me. Glory to God. I believe it. But the last thing that you have to realize is this. Sola. Say it with me. Sola. Sola. Scriptura. It's through the scriptures alone that we live our life. It's the scriptures that we preach. We hate sin. We love God. We believe Jesus. You've got to understand, that's what makes you a Christian. It is not how you come to church or when you come to church, but it's what you believe that brings you and makes you the church. Oh, somebody shout yes. You've got to realize, and I've got to realize that by Christ alone, you will live that life that through grace alone, you will be able to live that life, that you will be able to accept the grace of God by faith alone, and that ultimately you will not be guided by the culture or the opinions of others, but by scripture alone, that like the apostle Paul in the 11th chapter, you will declare in the 36th verse, and he says, for everything comes from him and exists by his power and is tended for his glory. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. Give him praise in this house. No, give him a good praise in this house. Give him a glorious praise. Give him your best praise. Hallelujah.